you very much, Chair. Give me this uh, one more chance to ask a question to our President. Mr. President, I noticed in your speech you mentioned many times about ASEAN centrality. Mm. You review the TAC, which your father signed, that showed the bond of ASEAN. I think the ASEAN centrality is very important, but it's not, we cannot take it for granted. It comes actually uh, comes from the ASEAN way, three principles. First, mutual respect. Second, consensus building. Third, considerate other parties' comfort level. In my words, to put it simply, we can summarize it as three notes. No intervention, and no use of force, and no tapping up hot spots. Only because of these principles strictly followed by ASEAN members and other stakeholders that we have ensured the ASEAN and East Asia at large for a long lasting peace since the end of the colonial rule in history. So we cherish a lot. I fully agree with you. I support the centrality of ASEAN. And even some professor like Keshe Ma, Keshe Makboni, he suggests ASEAN is deserves the award of peace, Nobel Peace Prize. I agree with him. Thank you very much. I think uh, your question is, do you agree with me? So, President Mark, yes, please. My question is, much. President, in the eyes of the international community, some of your Philippine behavior in recent day, recent time, now sounds like you really consider other parties' comfort level, and there is a risk of ruining the regional long-term, long-lasting peace since the end of the, uh, you know, colonial history. What's your comment on that? Thank you very much. Well, I. Uh I cannot imagine what you must be referring to if the, uh, if the reference or the allusion is to uh, the Philippines uh, uh, somehow uh, tearing apart uh, the, what we have agreed on with, uh, in, ASEAN, in, uh, in, in terms of ASEAN centrality. Uh, quite the contrary. I think, the, I think if you uh, uh, examine more closely the remarks that I just made, we, uh, I precisely uh, a focus on ASEAN centrality, and that the principles that are laid down that are involved in the, the concept of ASEAN centrality are some things that we must use to guide us. And if we have been distracted in the past years or so, then it's time for us to return and remember once again what ASEAN was created for. And uh, that is uh, to create an ag occupation of uh, nations uh, that uh, have very many uh, common interests and that can be and that partnership and partnerships within that multilateral that multilateral organization can help each other and they help the region and so uh, the Philippines is still uh, is, as still remains true to the principles that uh, were established and upon which uh, ASEAN was born. And I think, uh, as I said, that uh, many of these things that were so, we, we no longer speak of today, but we must, because they are as relevant that today as they ever were, perhaps even more so, because the global, the global uh, situation is a great deal more complicated than it used to be before. Uh, I, would, I would even go far as to say there is no such thing as a regional issue any longer. Uh, we have all experienced the, the unexpected uh, effects of the war in Ukraine, of the conflict in, in, in the Middle East, uh, and uh, all of these, and, in the, and when we talk about the South China Sea, we have to also remember that uh, the South China Sea is, is the passageway for half of the world trade. And therefore, the peace and stability of the South China Sea and the freedom of navigation of the South China Sea is a world issue. And that is what I am proposing. And I am saying that this is a, re this is, yes, it is a regional issue, but we must examine and be part of the discussion. We must include 
uh, all parties in the discussion because now it is not just ASEAN member states or stakeholders, and it is quite uh, it is quite easy to see that it is in fact the entire world that have become stakeholders in the peace and stability of our region. Thank you. Um, President Marcos, I'm going to ask you a very direct question, if you don't mind, which is, if Chinese Coast Guard water cannons killed a Filipino sailor, would that cross a red line? And then can you also give us a sense of what are the actions that would trigger a request from Manila to Washington to invoke U.S.-Philippine Mutual Defense Treaty? Thank you. And I will... Magandang gabi, Mr. President. Good evening, uh, Ms. President. Um, my question relates to your vision for the force posture of the Philippines by the end of your term. So the Philippines has always discussed that the defense of our national territory is primarily our responsibility under the um, unilateral defense plan. So what specific um, force packages are you eyeing particularly in the next coming years? And what exactly are we to expect after Horizon 3 of the AFP modernization program? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I, I just, uh, the, what the gentleman is referring to, the Horizon 3 acquisition program, is the acquisition program that the, uh, the, the, the depart our Department of National Defense has just completed. Uh, then we are presently in the, in the process of finding suppliers for all the different uh, uh, requirements that we, that we have to build up uh, our capabilities in the, in the, uh, the armed forces. The, um, of the Philippines, and that that uh, that will that we are hoping uh, that you know the, these are these 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 uh, acts are just a deterrence, uh, and we, uh, as they say, to 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 uh, work for peace, prepare for war, and there is it is an unfortunate truth, but uh, and that is why we have. Uh, well, we have undertaken this uh, long-term, it, it has been going on for many years now, this long-term plan of uh, increasing the capabilities of our, um, of our military uh, and uh, our civilians, such as the Coast Guard uh, in, the, in the Philippines. To go back to the, very, to the first question, uh, what, would it, what would happen if, uh, the, uh, uh, if uh, there was an incident that ended up killing a Filipino serviceman, be, them a, be they a, a, a Coast Guard or um, um, in the military and part, part of the Navy. Well, that, that would be uh, especially, that, that would certainly uh, increase the, the level of uh, response. And uh, if by, by a willful act on a, uh, uh, a Filipino, uh, not only not only serviceman, but even a Filipino citizen, by a wealth, if one, if a Filipino citizen is killed by a willful act, that that is, I think, uh, very very close to what we define as an act of war, and therefore we will respond accordingly. And our treaty partners, I believe, also hold that same standard for uh, when. The action, with the joint action, will be uh, undertaken uh, in support of any time, any such incident in the Philippines. Uh, they, once they, once we, we have already, we already have suffered injury, but uh, thank God we have not yet uh, uh, gotten to the point where any of our participants, civilian or otherwise, have been killed. But uh, once we get to that point, that is certainly we would have crossed the Rubicon, uh, certainly crossed the Rubicon. Is that a red line? Almost certainly it's going to be a red line. Mr. President, you have helped us to set the agenda. You have provoked our thinking. You've spurred us to action. That is the keynote speech that we needed. That is the keynote speech that we got. You have sung for your supper. I think it's time for you to enjoy it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>